great Scott. If my calculations are correct, you are listening to this before your fantasy football drafts have taken place. I have been to the future. And those that followed the advice from the Fantasy Footballer's Ultimate Draft Kit had a spectacular season and withstood many victories. It's almost as if Biff had given each of them a copy of Grey's Sports Almanac. I'd highly recommend heading over to www.ultimatedraftkit.com without any further delay. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday. August 30th, the Fantasy Footballers. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Back with you. If my calculations are correct, (laughs) we'll be entering the Fantasy Time Machine today. Which is always a good time. Knowing the future, that is. Yeah. And uh, we'll try to let you know who the 2023 Amari Cooper is the 2023. What do we got next? Josh, Josh Jacobs. Jacobs. Okay. The 2023 Geno Smith. What I love about this show. All very surprising. Is we do. We have actual time machines that we get to use just for this episode. That's what you love about this. Episode. Yeah. So everything we will be giving you is 100% factually correct perhaps not in this universe but at least in one of them yeah if it it doesn't come true in this one yes yeah jump in a black hole and you might end up where in the multiverse these are these are hard to call but we we take a look at situations and uh, i try and compare so you know there's there's a little bit of feeling of of how that player was uh looked at last year during the draft and just say this is it. This is the person who's going to be this or uh, by next year. <laughs> it's confusing, man. There's too much. Time yeah, I to mean, talk. time travel is very confusing. Uh, Jason knows a ton about it. Yeah, no, I. Uh, a lot of people would be surprised. I built it. I built the, the time, time machine. machine. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, with the science. A lot stuff. of people think uh, Al <laughs> would do that for us. Right, but he's too lazy. Uh, can I get? Uh, I need one of the deucers to let me know the current count for the Megalobowl at some point during the show today. But uh, it is it is growing. It's it getting, is mega. It's getting more mega. It's becoming more mega. Megalobowl.com. Come compete with us and play in the largest in-season uh, tournament in all of the lands. Yeah, and if you win that tournament, you will be in our listener league with us automatically, which we are drafting Today, today yes, is our are. listener league draft. So, are we really? We yeah, yeah we yes, are. Yes, Andy. It's on, it's on the schedule. What time is that happening? That that is happening at uh, five p.m. Eastern. Well, I'll be darned. Yeah, so, I hope you're there. We have a fantasy we, MVP episode tomorrow. By the way, we use this. We you could call it a time machine, or mm-hmm. you could call it a calendar. Okay, and that's but where it's, that's where it's penciled in. Yep. Look, my family is in the middle of a move right now. <laughs> I'm not even alive at this point in time that's fair i am living in the mist and i don't know why we chose to move in the middle of the football season i'm sorry that i made that decision for you we're a bunch of idiots (laughs) uh the dynasty podcast special episode released this morning live from nfl studios uh we did dynasty my guys and rookie fever Mm. it was a fun episode i don't really know how long jason and myself argued about Bijan. Not long enough. But it was a long time. Yeah, you, I was trying to remember, remember that. Yeah, I was trying to. I'm like, what was. Because this weekend is a blur, or last weekend. Mm-hmm. And I knew there was something that we ended up, like, really digging into it. And it was it was Bichon. Yeah. The range of outcomes for Bichon Robinson. Well, Kyle normally hosts the, the Dynasty Pod. I, yep. I uh, pinch hit this week and hosted it. 
which was the first time I've hosted the Dynasty Pod myself. Mm-hmm. First and, and last. And, uh, I mean, clearly, based on Jason's behavior, Kyle lets him get away with anything. And I had to push back for a long time. The Dynasty show is a lot of fun because we we just let ourselves go. We'll talk forever. In fact, this is a very long episode talking about my guys and uh, and the rookies. 13,773 participants in the Megalobowl so far. Okay. So hop in there, megalobowl.com. The quick question of the day, do you like to use a late draft pick to grab the backup running back to your RB1 as an insurance policy, or do you view it as a wasted pick? I would say the vast majority, I view it as a wasted pick. I It's, it's drafting for your floor. Yeah, look, should something happen to your starter, maybe you have a, a plug-and-play running back who's going to come in and give you some production. The problem is we remember very fondly when it works, but it, is, it has only worked a small amount of times. It's it's great for uh, like a week or two here or there. You know, like, oh, Dalvin Cook is going to miss a, a couple weeks here with his shoulder. Alexander Madison then looks fantastic in those situations. But if you're talking whole season then that is it's not likely the answer you you don't you it's hard to say for sure who is the true backup and it's going to be a committee more than likely brooks uh you made a good point in the slack what did you just say um i i always actually do this where i not always but i draft my backup and then i regret it because i'm afraid to drop them every yeah. week if, if yeah, my rb1 yeah, yeah. gets hurt then fully I'm, committed to them yes exactly yeah, that's a good point. I mean, think about the scenarios that exist out there. You, let's say you take, give me a player that has like a clear, defined backup situation uh, that would go in the last let's, round. Uh, I don't know if it's last round, but let's say uh, Derek Henry and Tajay Spears. Okay. Because um, it should Henry yeah, go, if Henry went down, example. Tajay Spears would be the hotness on the way for one. That's a good example. And, and that's a player you could potentially get with the last round. The trap would be one. You take Tajay Spears because they are the backup instead of a player that would have more season-long value in general. So that could be a mistake you make because you could take Raheem Mostert, who's a starter for the Dolphins, right. in the last round. And if you think about if Henry went down, are you going to have enough confidence in Tajay Spears? Maybe over Raheem Mostert, but there are just some pitfalls to it. And if the value of the backup is assured, like if you know they're going to be great, they generally go higher in the draft, and then you're committing two higher draft capital picks on the same backfield, right. and then you're super committed to them when you talk about like a backup going – like, for example like – Charbonnet. Yeah, if, that's a good if, example. If you were to draft Kenneth Walker, and then you want Charbonnet, so you've kind of got the whole backfield, you're spending a lot of draft capital on those two guys because the backup is really good, so he gets drafted highly. Um, I think the only situation where I would consider drafting the, the quote-unquote backup backup the insurance option for my player um is when I know my player is not going to start and I spent higher draft capital on him if 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 Jonathan Taylor um is someone you end up drafting and you know you're not going to have him or or uh Alvin Kamara someone like that then okay maybe I'll grab Kendra Miller because I think I'm going to be able to start him right off the bat it's, it's like an it's an insurance policy that I can claim right away. Yeah, it's more like a band aid, right? Yeah, it's it's going to help me get to the player. But you know, if I draft Eric Henry, it is. I I don't think you need to draft Tajay Spears. Not that Tajay Spears is a bad pick. Like I I like him in general. Um, but it it's not a need. You you don't need to be, uh, you know, grabbing your insurance option at the draft. You day. didn't benefit from the Hassan Haskins backup pick last oh. year when Henry went down. Oh, we. We played him. We sure this did. Was was a dynasty league, but yeah, we we played him, and it was it's not a lot of production. <laughs> the other challenge is when you have these kind of backfields like Miami, like Philadelphia, um, where if you take multiple options in that backfield, I've done it before, long time ago. It's a nightmare, not because you don't want to have the one that breaks out, but because sometimes no one breaks out, and you're stuck with all of them and you don't know which one to start, or if someone breaks out, you're afraid to drop the other guy that you had. Like, you know, if you ended up with uh, Charbonnet and Kenneth Walker, you're never dropping either guy, if you, even if Charbonnet breaks out. If, you have, if you've been around the fantasy football landscape for a while, 
Carolina, many moons ago, had two fantastic running backs. They had D'Angelo Williams and Johnny Stewart. And when they were both healthy, it was like, what do I what do I do here? What do I I have two great options. Should one of them miss time, I have a an actual fantastic fantasy running back. But when that didn't happen, you were just getting low output. It's it's not playing for first. It's like I'll wrap the conversation saying for that. Drafting your backup as the last pick, as opposed to drafting someone else's backup, you're not playing for first. You're playing for, well, I just don't want to have a, a terrible season. And it, yeah, Who cares? If you're last or you're third or you're second, your goal is to get first place. Your team does not get better when you lose your starter and the backup goes in. Exactly. But your team gets better when someone else loses their starter and you add a, a, a great asset to your, to your roster. Yes. One final wrinkle. I don't mind it. Obviously, Dynasty is completely different. I like having the backup in Dynasty. That's way different. Because I'm guaranteed to have a starter at that position, and you don't have the luxury of taking these late rounders that might be starters. So it is different there. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. The bomb dropped at 4 p.m. Eastern yesterday. Man, Twitter was. And it was a dirty bomb. For the final 20 minutes, as we sat waiting for the news on Jonathan Taylor, I mean, how many times did Twitter get refreshed just like from the fantasy community? I I was sitting there just spamming it. Spam, I wanted to be the first one to see it, mm -hmm. and we knew it was – there was a time limit. We knew it had to come out. The news did come out. No trade. Jonathan Taylor remains on the Colts. Jonathan Taylor remains on the PUP list, meaning he will miss – a minimum of four games and like I, I think we start with the Jonathan Taylor yeah exactly and here's where you have to dig in oh we're, we're in, <laughs> now we're in the we're we in need a, a whole day of training on this one button I warm think. We, in these we have, we're in the Seinfeld apartment right now or uh, Kramer is the Kramer's with the see Al wants to blame me place. but there's only one button that does it that way <laughs> All the other buttons I got to turn off. So, so to Jonathan Taylor, he will miss the first four games. Those four games count towards him accruing a season. Jonathan Taylor, like, I, I'm pretty sure that he has to work with the team. The team will be like, are you ready to go? And he'll be like, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to come off the PUP. And he only has to get to six games to become like he has fulfilled his contract. As long as he stays on this PUP for six weeks, yes, the Colts can technically franchise him, but I'm saying he has now moved through his contract and he gets to figure out what's going on during the offseason. This is a disaster, a disaster. If Jonathan Taylor wants to do a essentially a hold in, he, he now has, he has a free pass to do it. It was Good really faith. dumb of the Colts to leave him on the pup. It's it's bad strategy, even if his ankle is hurting. Um, if they were to trade him, if a team wants to come and get him, that team will not have him for the first four weeks either. So, Correct. you know, if you're thinking, oh, well, when he goes to Miami, they'll take him off the pup. doesn't work that way. He's officially on the pup, can't come off through the first four weeks. This was never a good faith situation with Jim Irsay and Jonathan Taylor. In Las Vegas... They wanted Josh Jacobs back. They they both sides did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just needed to reach that point. It doesn't. We won't see Jonathan Taylor most likely play for this roster. It, is the way it's feeling right now. It feels and that things way. can change with with dollars and cents. But you know, you are going to have the overarching Jonathan Taylor is he really hurt question that is going to be layered on top of the potential trade or returning to a roster that look the enthusiasm before we even knew this situation was happening. Jonathan Taylor was lower in our rankings than the consensus simply because of the data associated with a rushing quarterback and Anthony Richardson and a roster. And a rookie quarterback. Yes, exactly. That And a roster that is, is questionable. So at this point, you're looking at the draft, and I w I've been asked a ton over uh, on on Twix. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that what we're, I saw somebody mention yeah, it. Yeah, I did. I did combine it. Um, you know, do I go and I invest on Deion Jackson? Do I invest on Evan Hull? Like, I, I'd love to have Evan Hull in a dynasty just to see what happens. But the truth is, is Zach Moss is going to be back from a from a broken arm. Uh, maybe not week one, maybe not week two, but soon. 
Deion Jackson and Evan Hull both had opportunities to start. Deion Jackson started the final two preseason games, but Evan Hull rotated in with the starters at different points in the game. Who is a, Evan Hull is a fifth round rookie out of Northwestern. You're not going to be ha- I, like you are maybe not going to be super happy with Jonathan Taylor in this offense. It seems like a landmine to try to start one of these guys right now. I I can ima- I can't imagine to start the year you're in a position where you have to start a Colts running back from this triad. No, I I agree. Week one, you will have no idea. You you are just flat guessing when you want to say, okay, it's going to be Evan Hall or it's going to be – even if Zach Moss is active. If, it's, if Zach right. Moss is active, I, I would presume that he will be the starter. As would I. If I was to target one Colt running back, it would be Zach Moss because I think that's who's going to get the opportunity to touch the ball the most. And that – coming from Jason yeah. Moore, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Jason saying he would target Zach Moss, that is – that's a big step. To be fair. I said, if I had to target a Colt, <laughs> okay. I would target Zach Moss. This is like a forced targeting situation. Okay, I still do not believe that it will be a good situation, uh, kind of like what Andy was saying. We we had Jonathan Taylor on the bus list in the UDK all off season. Um, <laughs> yeah. Five point home dogs in week one against Jacksonville as well. So Gee. it's it's something that I would. It's like the backup running back question. Like, are you going to invest a final pick on? Um, Raheem Mostert or, you know, Brian Robinson later in the draft. Are you going to try to shoot your shot on one of these three? I mean, the problem is, is last year during the final week of the season, Zach Moss had a number two overall finish, but then Deion Jackson had all the receptions and he was number 11 on the week. Mm -hmm. And now you have a guy in Evan Hull that actually catches the ball really well. And then week one, it'll be Kareem Hunt as the star. Oh, right. Yeah. So you, you just don't know. Yeah. Speaking of Kareem Hunt, four teams offered him deals. He is not. Signed one, waiting for the right offer. Uh, okay. So I, you know, right now he doesn't have a team. Jerry Judy, not going on short term IR. He said he's hopes to play week one. Okay. Um, I look. Like, it's it's good news at least forward facing that he's not he wasn't placed on the short term IR. You know what I this does? I can't imagine week one. This makes it more complicated to take the later round shot on Marvin Mims to me who. If Drew, if Judy's not back, like Mims is going to start Week One, and you're like, "Hey, cool, you got an opportunity there." We like his film. I did at least. Yeah, yeah I his, loved it. his production profile. And so, great opportunity. But then Judy could be back. I don't think Judy's going to be back, and the, but he the, will he, be he, within a couple of weeks. Sure, uh, not putting him on the pup is a very good sign that he he will be back before Week Four. But I doubt that he is there Week One, which gives Mims an opportunity. And if you look at what the the Broncos were calling around looking for wide receivers this week after the Judy injury. That says to me. Well, they're like, I think they have Kyle. What, they only have four on the roster. Yeah. So they have, so Cortland Sutton, Judy, Mims, and then who am I forgetting as the fourth? But I like they're, even with uh, everything that's going on, they, just, they don't have healthy guys to play. It's very strange. DJ Chark, optimistic he can play in week one against the Falcons. That, is surprisingly good news. Okay. Dwayne McBride waived, running back for the Vikings. They signed Miles Gaskin instead. The gas man. (laughs) Phew. Only one day. (laughs) Boys. He just needed to fill up. I be lying if after the the Dwayne McBride (laughs) release yesterday, I was like, here comes freaking Leonard Fournette. Nope. And it wasn't. It was Miles Gaskin. Miles so Gaskin. We're good. We're still on track with Madison. Uh, Albert Aguabanom was not released. He was actually traded to the Eagles, a late round swap. Uh, not that important. And then players waved yesterday. Melvin Gordon, goodbye. Yep. He was on the Ravens, everybody. Bailey, Zappy. Zap, 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 zap. It wasn't just like r- as of Smartest right now. Smartest move ever <laughs> by New England, in my opinion. Really? I Smartest completely move. Agree. Ever. I was if telling Mike the same thing. Galaxy brain genius, super smart. Don't put the fans and the team in a position where you might have questions about who you're going to start at quarterback, confidence problems with Mac Jones. Just make your Mac Jones bed and sleep in it. I don't know if the sleep's going to be good, but just do it. No, I, I would imagine they'll try to sign him to the practice squad should he clear. Right, but that's the... This is a huge risk by the Patriots. I saw some beat writers talking about what are they doing, and it's it has to do with other injury system or other uh, other injury 
uh, concerns throughout the team that they they had to make some really hard decisions because as of right now, Mac Jones is the only quarterback on that roster, and you you can't go into a season with only. No, they'll one figure guy. that out. I just personally didn't. I don't think it's healthy for that team to have the situation they had on the table last year. Fan favorites versus what you should be doing. Like Mac Jones is the better player. Mac Jones needs confidence. Make it obvious. But if he's the better player, he shouldn't be concerned at all about no, Bailey's that, Zappi. No, that's not, not how the world yeah. works. Human nature, you're always going to love the backup, and especially in New England. It, or, you know, there's certain cities where it's like there's not going to be a lot of patience. No, they, not they, with a they, loss. They expect to win. They expect to, you know, it's like, oh, you're, you're, you're not playing well. You're a bum. Get out of town. I mean, did you not see Dak Prescott, how furious he is right now with the Trey Lance trade? They didn't give him a heads up. You're adding a... You're adding a dramatic piece to that roster right now. No, that's not what I read from Trey Lance. What do you, Trey Lance is saying he's happy to have him there. Have you watched Dak Prescott talk <laughs> about this? No, I guess Dak, I just, Dak's I just interview the is as controlled fury as you can get. Wasn't told about it. No heads Correct. up. Uh, furious about Will Greer being let go, who was playing well for them and a friend of the team. That's fair. And he then, can be mad about and that. And then there's the component of, look, you're adding a – Draft high draft capital pick to your team that if things turn, look, no patience in Dallas either. If things turn, you're just going to have the whispers in the bushes, and every whisper affects confidence. This is just my personal opinion on what I would do as a franchise. It fits perfectly with what you were railing against yesterday, which was if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. If you don't go out and definitively tell your team who the guy is and give the guy the ability to make mistakes, because even the best quarterbacks in football make tons of mistakes. In my opinion, it, it saps you of the ability to have that guy succeed. Yeah, and if you've got Pat Mahomes, okay, go out and get the best backup you can so that your team can – but if you've got a middle-tier guy who's not proven and you're unsure, you can't you – I'm not saying I wasn't a shocked. lack of confidence, you know. Yeah. I mean, I would say that if that's truly the situation for Mac Jones, it doesn't matter who the backup is. And, but you know that – that Bailey Zappi was, I think, a fourth rounder. He was two and zero in his starts. So it was like you have a really cheap backup who could come in and actually win games. And if Mac Jones is that fragile, it doesn't matter who the backup is. the The crowd will turn on him regardless. Also, Cardinals. Uh, no, they won't go. turn on him to say go put Brian Hoyer in the game if you get a veteran backup. I mean, Bailey Zappi was getting chance from the crowd last year. Yeah, uh, Cardinals go get Zappi. <laughs> yeah, that's actually he should start for us. Yeah, week one. <laughs> if we wanted to win. Uh, Chosen Anderson, goodbye. Yep. Malik Davis, see ya. Corey Clement, bye. Didn't know which, you were playing football still. The, Chiefs running back. Sorry, the, the the Malik Davis one, which we you we knew it was going to happen, but it is official. They've said they're going to try and bring him back to the back to the practice squad. Uh, this, we're talking about the Cowboys running back situation, but Rico Dowdle is officially the backup. Maybe if you're in a dynasty league that fell asleep at the wheel, perhaps he is out there. But this is also like you, you need to have this information of, of just in case, like know the name Rico Dowdle. Should, like if week one comes out and he's getting 30 percent of the work, that won't be surprising. How healthy has James Conner been in recent years? No, about the same as all the years. Yeah, most mostly. So you're one James Conner injury now from Keontae Ingram in oh, Arizona having an opportunity to start. That is so keep that in mind. Yes, but that is trusting the process. That is that's how twenty you, carries at running back midway through the year is something anybody would dream of from any player anywhere. Yeah, but I don't think he's good. I Keontae, don't think, it yeah. don't matter. I actually think Keontae Ingram's not bad. It it just doesn't. I mean, is is Deion Jackson great? Is better than Keontae Ingram. No, I think I think Ingram's all right. Uh, Do you know Denaric, what he did last Denaric year? Prince, Denaric Prince for the Chiefs, darling, running back. Goodbye. He's been yeah. cut. Yeah, there's only one Isaiah Pacheco. Um, all right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/slash-insurance. Quick break. Back with the time machine. Why you got to dunk on Keontae Ingram, Mike? Uh, due to his 27 carries turning into 2.2 yards per carry. Yeah, okay. He's a short yardage guy. <laughs> literally. He can only get. That's literally what he can do. A few yards. That's I, like. My point wasn't he was good or bad. The point was that James yes. Conner gets hurt every year. And I totally agree with and that. And in a dynasty league, 
Put him on your roster. You're going to be desperate for no. a start at some point in time. He was highlighted in the Nasty Boys of Summer episode oh, okay. of the Dynasty Podcast, right. so we talked about it. I don't like that show. I never listened to it. <laughs> All right, moving on. Marty, you've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the future. I gotta let the uh, <laughs> the chimes do their the thing. The chimes finish up. I honestly thought the drop might go forever. I kind of hoped it would. I, yeah, I can go back little, in time and re-listen. A little sad that we're up now. I want to <laughs> just keep listening to that. Uh, the premise of this segment is: if we could travel forward in time, who would be this year's version of players that flat out surprised last year? Amari Cooper, amazing start to the season. Josh Jacobs surprised everybody, but Brooks. And then you had. Um, Geno Smith, who people did not have high expectations for. So we want to talk about what made those players special last year and how we can apply those same filters and potentially narrow the field to identify them as candidates to be that player this year. Amari Cooper was, let me give you the resume for last year. He was drafted as the wide receiver 26. So that was late sixth round in drafts. He ended up the wide receiver nine. 132 targets, 78 for 11, 60, and 9. He had as many top 12 weeks as A.J. Brown. He had one more than Jalen Waddell or Amon Ross St. Brown. He is, his start was shocking, and it was great. Briefly speaking to him, he still might be a tremendous value this year. Yeah, usually when a player is a good value like three, four years in a row, it just keeps happening. Like like Tyler Lockett. <laughs> yeah, you could have every the same... year he's he's undervalued and overperforms. And for some reason, the world does not love Amari Cooper. I love hanging with Mr. Cooper. Yeah. And um he keeps dropping in drafts that we've been in. Oh, you're mad because you didn't get this? Yeah. Thank you. Feeling better? Much better. I was pleased to be able to claim this gentleman as my Amari Cooper for this year because uh, Jason's talked about him quite a bit. He was a bus pick for Jason last year. He is not that this year. He's a value for Jason this year. Completely agree. I've taken him in two drafts recently, and that would be Deontay Johnson, wide receiver of the Pittsburgh Steelers, who is going as the wide receiver 35 right now. So he's going 11 spots, uh, or I'm sorry, nine spots further than where Amari Cooper went last year. We have him ranked higher than that. Uh, the taste of last year's Stinky Steelers souffle, which is what that <laughs> offense was. I like that. Um, it's still in the air, and that's being reflected in his draft position. Uh, he has been a wide receiver one before, so that's part of the recipe to me is, you know, when you look at that value, Omari Cooper has had a history of success. Deontay Johnson, I think you just have to watch him play football to know what he's capable of. He's a great route runner, um, go-to type of first down receiver, uh, the flashy player is George Pickens on the other side, but Deontay will have more targets. And this Pittsburgh offense, all signs point to it being vastly improved. Mm -hmm. uh, they have two running backs that are going to be contributing in this offense. They have Pat Fryermuth at tight end, and you've got two wide receivers that are very good. So I think Deontay right now stands out as the, the player that goes late in drafts that all of a sudden, like if you just end up in a situation where maybe you did draft a quarterback in a tight end, because uh, you got they dropped to you, and then you drafted some running backs. Like I legitimately have zero problem slotting Deontay Johnson in as my wide receiver too, on a draft where wide receivers just came late. And uh, Kenny Pickett, we've talked about it. He looks good. He's the highest graded quarterback this preseason in his uh, limited playing time. Uh, Deontay targeted on twenty nine percent of his routes. He is a very very good wide receiver who had a very outlier style year last season didn't score which was insane but you don't find wide receivers every day at wide receiver 35 that are guaranteed to get 120 targets in an offense and if Deontay stays healthy there's just no way he doesn't have that so you know we had 147 last year he just they were so low value receptions because he didn't end up in the end zone I'm just very excited about picking him up late in drafts it just feels like you stabilize your entire wide receiver core if you've already taken a few. And like I said, you could sneak 
late and take a guy like this and end up with a home run. Yeah, well, let me mention a guy who's going much later uh, than uh, your – I'm glad it's not me. Th than Deontay. Uh, earmuffs, Mike. <laughs> uh, earmuffs, don't listen. Uh, I'm going to throw Cortland Sutton's name into the mix. This is a player that has not been talked up uh, by the – fantasy community contractually this year. there is a reason why we, we have not talked him up yes i mentioned his name and you probably are reminded of the specific trash can that you threw uh, those dirty pants into those <laughs> stinky dirty poopy pants <laughs> oh no um you had to take that trash can and then you had to put it into a different trash right. can you had to put the trash that's, can in a dumpster yeah, yeah that's how bad the mess was last year and i get it but i went back and i looked and to me, there's there's a lot of Cooper vibes here. The first five weeks, I don't know if you guys remember this, because he had a terrible week one, but then he was actually okay. He, he was averaging nine targets, 83 receptions, 12 and a half fantasy points per game. You go to week six, and he's sitting there as the wide receiver 14 in fantasy football. Now, for whatever reason, things fell apart. The entire Broncos offense was really that's what you were putting – that's that's the that's the real poop that was in the pants was the Broncos offense and Russell Wilson and oh, Nathaniel Hackett and Cortland Sutton. I mean, there was there was no goodness from the Broncos offense last year. And it's rare for things to repeat in the NFL. Like changes are the normal in the NFL. When you've got Sean Payton coming in and you've had really good camp reports of Cortland Sutton. In fact, like uh August 9th here's a, a report from Zach Stevens uh, said today's practice was all about Russell Wilson and Cortland Sutton. Sutton caught every single pass thrown his way, including a 30-yard pass from Russ with Pat Sertain in great coverage, another catch with Damari Mathis all over him. They capped off the day with a short touchdown. He's had a good camp. And now we talked about Jerry Judy's injury. He probably won't be there week one, maybe, maybe not. But that depth chart at wide receiver, it, it's him. And that's kind of what I was trying to think. Like Amari Cooper last year – was the beneficiary of being the only dude. And obviously, Jerry Jude is going to come back, we hope. But again, we saw it last year with Keenan Allen, where when you're coming back from a really bad hamstring injury, which it appeared to be when he was carted off that late into camp, you're going to try to come back and you could re aggravate the issue. Cortland Sutton has a path to be a very relevant fantasy player. Nobody wants to have him right now because of I don't the way that I yeah the the <laughs> no way that interest. last year went um but uh Rich Rebar good friend of the show had this tweet uh Sutton ran 183 routes last season with Jerry Judy off the field and on those routes 2.2 yards per route that's great 29.7 percent of team targets that's great 39.9 percent of air yards 23 and a half targets per route run like he was the, he was the dude so I think you're going to be able to get off to a quick start if Jerry Judy is off the field, just like Amari Cooper got off to a quick start, and then uh, maybe maybe trade him away. Yeah, maybe. My my worry with him is the the history. You're going into year six with, with Cortland Slutton, and we're still waiting for the package to get delivered. You know, when you check the tracking code, and they're just like, I was supposed to get it today. And they're like, it's stuck at the facility. Oh, that tracking code. It, we're at the. It said it was delivered. Yeah, and that's the one. That's <laughs> no, it the one. Said it, says, it was delivered. Yeah. It says it was delivered. There's I'm a, doing laps around my house. There is just there. Is, it is not here. And, and, and they, I look. They I, left a picture of the <laughs> delivery, but it was just my front door. Yeah, there, there was, was no, there was nothing there, right? Yeah. I look. The problem there is I love I love those uh, target per out run, air yard, all those numbers, except for they didn't result in production. The production did not connect to those numbers. That's the part that freaks me out. But right now you are you are limited in your options there, and so the, the, to me it's the if then this, if then if, if this, this then, then that, that yep. of Peyton Russ improving, then I think those other numbers right. can translate. And um, look for what you have to invest in him. Throw that dart, yeah. chuck that dart, and the hamstring injury for Judy. We can be enthusiastic about his early return. But then will there be another return and another? Like Judy has it been. It could be way worse. I mean, wasn't he hurt as a rookie? And then he was hurt last year. And so we've. Uh, that package hasn't been delivered either. Yeah. Let's put it that way. I need to change shipping companies. Yeah, with, Denver needs a with new. With Denver. You had the three solid games at the beginning of the year. And then you had the two games that uh, Jerry Judy missed last year, weeks 11 and 12. And it wasn't spectacular but Cortland Sutton had over 10 points in a half point scoring format both of those weeks like that's 
10 points. I'll take that. All right. I'm jumping in here because this my vibes, th this is a very vibey pick for me because last year Amari Cooper, I believe my quote was, he could be great, he could be terrible, and I'm just, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> like, I was so willing to be wrong on Amari Cooper uh, if if he comes out and he has a great season and he had a really great season to start, and it, I still was like, yeah, I, I, I knew this was possible. I just didn't want to go in on it. And that's where I am with DeAndre Hopkins, who is now on the Tennessee Titans, an older player, a player who has historically been great for fantasy football. He's the number one, easily the number one target on the team. He's going right around that same area, you know, right now in the back of the fifth on sleeper, the wide receiver 20. He's only 31. It's not necessarily the end. It The probability is against him, but we do have a couple guys in their age 31 season. Emmanuel Sanders was top 20 in points per game. Julio, of course, and it's me, Jason, <laughs> Adam Thielen. When I was a young spry 31, I was the wide receiver 16. Do you remember those days? The good old days. <laughs> I wish I could go back in my own time machine. Last year, Hopkins <laughs> averaged nearly 11 targets per game. I don't He's think so much younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> He's so much younger than you, Mike. He's so much younger. Not in my heart. No, no uh, not in football players. Not on the field. Last year, Hopkins got insane volume. I don't expect. Can I change it my to pick to Adam Thielen <laughs> for this category? Oh, please do. Please He's starting do. for me in a dynasty league, so I have to believe. Uh, but DeAndre Hopkins and I just I can see the path. For him to be very solid, I can see the path for it to, like all the Tennessee Titans arguments of like, I oh, know it's not a great season for Hopkins, and I just, I'm really indifferent on him. Whereas at his ADP, and that's where Cooper was for me last year. Which, which is funny there, Mike, is that you were indifferent about Amari Cooper, but that was a mistake, right? Yeah. So, are you going to remedy the mistake? No, I will remain indifferent. Okay, about Okay, that's DeAndre kind Hopkins. of the message I got there is that you're going to just, they say you learn from your mistakes. Oh, the Foot Clan learns yeah, from, from Mike's mistakes. From Mike's yeah. mistakes. Mike uh, remains in them so you can learn from them. Exactly. I, just, I told you, this is a very vibe-heavy pick. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. Traylon Burke's supposed to be back pretty soon. Um, I have been staring down DeAndre Hopkins in drafts, and I, I acknowledge that, like, have, I could have a gold mine. And have you, but I could also regret it. Have you drafted him in many no, places? No, I took Deontay Johnson instead. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately, those are. I was looking at both of those, and I went with the younger player. I would go Deontay Johnson as well. All right, let's find 2023's Josh Jacobs, who was drafted as the RB22, and he was number one in standard scoring. Talk about an absolute steal. Uh, I don't have the numbers of like most common player on championship teams in front of me, mm. but I know Josh Jacobs was involved in that. I think he equation. I think he was the highest. There you go. I mean, when you get the RB1 in standard scoring, the RB3 in half point in the late fourth round where Brooks was keeping that torch burning for Josh Jacobs, um, and he, he ran for 1,653 rushing yards, that's stealing, and that changes your entire roster because you've already drafted high draft capital players, hopefully well. To me, this is Damian Pierce. This is Damian Pierce of sure. the Houston Texans. He is going at RB18 right now, so close to that RB22 range. I watched enough Damian Pierce last year to... Honestly, there's some similarities to the way that Josh Jacobs ran between the tackles, broke tackles, and the way Damian Pierce runs. I mean, Violent. He, he's just a ferocious uh, eater of souls, I'll say. <laughs> Uh, Damian Pierce is so far and away the best running back in Houston. That has become very plain and very clear in the fact that he plays every single snap with the starters. He eight, ran eight routes. There could be some doors opening on that side. The biggest difference between Pierce and Jacobs, if you look at the time machine and what could happen, is you need to involve yourself more in the passing game. But Damian Pierce will have an opportunity to do that if he's in on all three downs and they don't have the Rex Burkhead third down I don't know, concession that they were doing last year. Uh, he is a very, very talented player. Um, he came out and talked about how many routes he's running in this offense, this new offense now, and um, the fact that he went to lose some weight so that he could be more of a participant in the passing game. I like that. 
I think Damian Pierce might end up being in contention to lead the league in rushing. And that's what Josh Jacobs did last year. So um, that's where I'm at. Yeah, if if um, you weren't in the dock first, I probably would have gone Damian Pierce. I'm so um, in on Damian Pierce at his current draft day value based on what we've seen in the preseason. The only weird thing is if you look at last year with Josh Jacobs, it was the utilization in the preseason that made us go, I don't want to touch Josh Jacobs yeah. at all. So that's where it's a little bit opposite there. Um, the player that I want to bring up is based upon the fact that Josh Jacobs got everything. He the, he was good, very good in his own right. I don't want to take anything away from how electric he was on the field, but the reason that he was you know, an absurdly good fantasy option is because of the total amount of touches he got. They didn't utilize anyone else in the backfield. We went in thinking, yeah, oh, it blew our minds. We thought Brandon Bolden, they brought Brandon Bolden over. You know, he's he's that coach's favorite guy coming from the other oh, system. Yeah. He's going to catch the ball. You got Amir Abdullah. Ooh, uh, Zim, you know, uh, Zamir, Zamir White. White. Yeah. He's, he's a, you know, a rookie. He's going to, th this is a messy backfield. And it turns out all those guys are un unused. They barely, they barely were on the field. And when I look at depth charts around the NFL, Kyron Williams, Zach Evans, Ronnie Rivers, and Matt Colburn, to me, say that, yeah, that, that, that says that Cameron, Mr. Akers, is going to have an enormous workload on his shoulders. I think this is a volume play. Uh, I've been drafting him in live drafts over the last couple of days where he's going right now in the sixth round. It doesn't cost you that much to gamble. Um, he's the running back 22. More probability says he's going to be an okay fantasy asset. But around that range, there's very few guys that you can see a clear path towards being like a top six a real breakout player, and uh, I see that for for Cameron. I've talked about him recently, but he reminds me in those ways of Josh Jacobs. I think that he could be that league winning type of pick. the The difference I see for Cameron is just how we we both view Kyron Williams, and I get that we don't have a ton of production on the field for Kyron Williams, and it's all speculation. But the fact that there was chatter after Week One when Williams got hurt that no he would he was going to he was a huge part of the plan all along we just weren't allowed to talk about it um that so i think the Kyron Williams I, I like the Cameron Akers pick but i think that Kyron could factor in m more than you're anticipating right but that's Brandon Bolden that's what we thought of Brandon Bolden last year we that's what i'm saying like Kyron Williams is sure. Brandon Bolden you're saying kind of just accept things at face value there's nobody to compete with him yeah don't speculate about maybe Right. And just take what's on the plate. Exactly right. All right, I'm jumping in. My pick, it is Alexander Madison of the Minnesota Vikings. Look, the vibes. I'm going down with this ship. I'm going. <laughs> the, everyone's like, grab a lifeboat. And I'm like, I want to I want to hit the bottom of the ocean. The, I really do. And what the, what I like about this pick for the, are the vibes of they aren't, you, like, they aren't overwhelmingly positive. You know, he – became the starting running back for the Minnesota Vikings and he's landed in the sixth round as the running back 21 because there you have people people on, like me you people on my side and then you have people on Andy's side of of well he's going into year five he's never really made an impact on a field like he couldn't even with uh, Dalvin Cook being older Madison couldn't really get himself on the field we have some history of him taking over for Dalvin Cook. You have eight career games with 15 opportunities. Most of those were when Dalvin Cook was out. He averaged nearly 17 fantasy points per game in that time. That's fantastic output. And you could say, well, look at the, the, the teams that he was playing. He played the Lions in a lot of those games. Well, he's still going to be playing the Lions because he's still in that same division. The, the point was just when Madison has seen opportunity, he's come through for fantasy football. And last year's Minnesota Vikings was very different. Last year, Dalvin Cook ran the third most routes among running backs. He was used as a true workhorse running back. And this is me looking at the depth chart behind him, where I think that Kyron Williams got, I've heard him talked up as, you know, as a potential backup. The Minnesota Vikings in this offseason, everything was, well, Madison's the guy. 
who is possibly going to be the number two in this backfield. It seems that Ty Chandler has won that job. Yes. And uh, it, But the point was, through most of camp, they had no idea. And then Ty Chandler had that one preseason game where he really showed out, and I think that's how he got the job. But Madison has been treated like the locked-in guaranteed starter, as in not, like not being used in the preseason. Alec Lewis, a beat reporter for the Minnesota Vikings uh, for The Athletic, on The Athletic Football Show, he said, quote, from the outset, Kevin O'Connell and the Minnesota Vikings staff are very committed to Alexander Madison being the guy, even talked up the pass-catching opportunities that Madison is getting. Because if, he, if he's going to get goal line, which the depth chart would signal that, and if he's going to actually get the pass-catching, this is an outrageous deal for a high-powered offense getting their starting running back in the sixth round. So either, either, the nice thing about Madison is either when the ship either sails, it, like it turns into a, a cruise ship and the fantasy points are plenty, I'm going to be on there with my free beverages, or and then Andy will be at the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> or I will be in Davy Jones' locker because I just was wrong on Madison. It is really tough because this feels like – I don't believe in the talent of the player. I don't think it's I don't think he's a top half back at all. But his opportunity looks secure. Yeah. So it is it is really challenging because it's kind of how I end up never drafting Najee. Is because Najee to me has never really impressed me. However, he's had seasons of value because he just gets every opportunity. Madison feels like Minnesota Najee to me and I could be caught in a let's, bad situation. Say, but here's the thing. If, if that's the case, if Najee, if what you know about Najee, if he was going in the sixth round, correct. You even have to, you, have even to you would oh, be on course. top of that. Of course. Yeah. And if Najee. You'll be happy to know I stared would, Najee down in one, a couple of our drafts this past week, and I, I moved you, that mouse over that you button. about it. I didn't and, do it, of course. <laughs> and if Najee were playing for the Minnesota Vikings and Kirk Cousins, that offense that you expect oh, yeah. to be better. Yeah, Najee's yeah. much better than, than Madison. That's that, a good point. That is true. Um, Don't finding, care. I know. I know. We need. You've got to have one team, Mike, with Jacob Dobbins and Madison as your two starters, so I can watch from afar and oh, be man. your best buddy. That, that is. I mean, that is like just you. You you print out that sheet of your roster. You soak it in kerosene, and you just see what happens. You leave it near a candle. Yeah. <clears> yeah. Not, that's not. You know. And honestly, you near. should. You should. We should buy a Nerf hoop. And you should get one of those mini trampolines <laughs> and you should dunk as hard as possible right on me <laughs> if both those players come through because I am a stubborn man. All right, let's find 2023's Geno Smith, undrafted by everybody. Not only undrafted by everybody, but he ruined the value of Metcalf and Lockett in people's eyes. Ends up leading the league in completion percentage, 30-plus passing touchdowns, a quarterback five finish. That's insane, but it's... It's what happened. It's so a, it's a little inflated due to the. Well, the, he didn't get hurt. That's what I mean. If he didn't get hurt, a lot of other quarterbacks did. In a regular year, he would not have been the quarterback five. But last year, he was. Let's go with my pick for this year's Dino Smith, which is a player drafted a year after Geno Smith. Send in the car. Send in the car. Derek Carr, quarterback for the. Probable division champs, <laughs> the New Orleans Saints. I, I was making the comment to Jason, and this is this means nothing. But Derek Carr looks as cut as okay. he's ever looked. I was gonna bring it up that this man, he spent his off season not throwing a football. He spent his off season only doing curls. I mean, he <laughs> is in great shape. I think he has a he's yoked right now. I think now. he has a an uh, a chip on the shoulder mm -hmm. uh, from the departure. A competitive chip, not a uh, misguided, angry. Uh, in the, you know, he's he said a lot of positive things about his time in Las Vegas, but it was time for a new, to turn over a new leaf. And um, quarterback twenty four, been there, done that with Derek Carr. We've seen it for year after year after year. Uh, you feel like he's eternally doomed to be outside the top twelve. Look, so far he has been. Geno Smith had two lives, the live before and the live after, life after. And uh, I think the stars just like Miley. <laughs> I think the star just like Miley. Yeah, good point. 
I think the stars might align this year. I think our confidence in the weapons in this offense, um, you're going to have Derek Carr with some equipment. You know, Chris Olave, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara coming back, Kendra Miller and Jamal Williams, and a very, very beatable set of teams in this division. And I think Derek Carr could have a lot of impressive performances. He also has a bunch, like a whole stable of touchdown scoring tight ends. Juwan Johnson, who I've thrown onto my watch list on sleeper every single time I draft, just in case I want to punt to the last round. Taysom Hill and Jimmy Grandpa and Foster Which, Moreau. Wow, did we, you included Jimmy Grandpa. Yeah, because did, he's going to score five times. Did we, did we talk about his Jimmy Graham's preseason game on this show? No. no. Dude. What? Jimmy Graham, what are you? <laughs> Dude, pull up the footage and watch Jimmy Graham look like vintage Jimmy Graham at his age 78 season. <laughs> like, it is, it was, I mean, that had to have been it. That had to have been all the gas he had left in the tank. He used it in that well, one matchup. Weren't we but, surprised but about the was, age? Well, how actually young he is? Yeah, I'm watching. I'm watching the clip, uh, the touchdown clip here, dude. Because that's all he does is, yeah, he boxes no. out and scores. Yeah, I am not surprised by his age. He's 36. He's wait, he is. Yes. All right, I'm not surprised. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. How old was How old was Antonio Gates during the final productive seasons? Figure that uh, out for yeah, me. Probably right it. around there. Um, but the weapons are solid. And look, a player like Chris Olave and all those other peripheral weapons, I think Derek Carr could have a very surprising year. So, Although I like both your picks more for the comp. Yeah, the comp, my comp for him is is uncanny. It is He has so much in common. A highly drafted quarterback who flamed out and was a bust. Then he's just in a camp battle where you start the offseason assuming it's going to be the other guy that's the starter but he wins and looks good in camp and he's got two great wide receivers oh it's exact in in you know dk metcalf and tyler lockett or mike evans and chris godwin baker mayfield is this year's yeah. geno smith yeah he's looked very good he's surprised everybody and kind of like i talked about with geno and miley I don't think Baker's a bad quarterback. We make fun of Baker a lot because, well, it's, it's fun. It's yeah, low-hanging fruit. It is. You want the apple near the bottom. It's delicious. <laughs> I don't want to get on a ladder. No. That's or difficult. get that pole thing. Yeah. No. Just, just let me. We're too old for let that. Me, <laughs> let me grab. I want to be able to eat it without touch, without using my hands. Just go right up. And <laughs> like like just, Bob? <laughs> yeah. Like bobbing for apples. Just grab it. <laughs> and that's, you know. Baker is the most perfect pick. Uh, he he has every opportunity to come out here and you know restore his career. He's got great weapons to do it with. What was it, he like? Fifteen of sixteen in the preseason? Like you talk about Kenny Pickett great, gets yeah. all the praise yeah. for the preseason, but Baker was like almost perfect. Yeah, Baker was Baker was fantastic in the preseason. Similar to Geno, he's completely undrafted. Like what's his uh, ADP on sleeper? He doesn't have it. <laughs> He's not drafted. Um, so, if you're in a, just so you know, 14 for 15, 106 yards, two touchdowns, 89 PFF passing grade on 15 passes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you brought up some stats, Andy, when you were talking about Mike Evans, you're, you're my guy, that, that matches very well with Baker's skill set. What Baker does well, Mike Evans does well. So those things could uh, work tremendously. He also is a check down quarterback. He, he basically checks it down or chucks it deep. And with Rashad oh, a checker White, chuck. A checker chuck. <laughs> um, and with uh, Rashad White there, a capable check down guy, you know, he did it with Brady. I, I think Baker could really surprise and, and um, be a good quarterback this year. If I'm in a two-quarterback league, I'm targeting Baker as my third quarterback. All right. I like it. That one is that one's spot on. Uh, by the way, we haven't even talked about it, but Mike Evans did miss the final preseason game due to uh, – uh, and yeah. he, and he I just che I just checked groinindex.com and he is a member. Oh of no, course. he's on there. Of but course. he did say like the um his head coach came out and said he would be playing if it was a regular season game. But I it didn't didn't make that, me feel any better. That's part of the Mike Evans experience. That's part he's, of the fantasy reaper experience. <laughs> that too. All right, I I'm, will lose it. I my am, mind. I am jumping and my in. job. I was shocked when I got into the, the show, Doc, that this was not Jason's pick. It Just was tell actually, us when you need us it, to contribute. It was actually written in okay. to my name before I got there, but uh, Baker was just too perfect. <clears throat> Go on. Which is fair, but this one. Go on. It is Sam Howell. 
Oh, Ooh. yeah, we got the triple howl. The wolf pack is in effect. Look, I think he's going to be good. I he's think he's going to run. I just too. watched every one of his preseason opportunities. I, I think he's going to be a good player. I think there is a very strong Welcome chance. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. <laughs> I think there is a very strong chance that Sam Howell is actually a top 12 quarterback. Can we get a deucer, Hal? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, boys, you yeah, want to yeah. try it out? Yeah. Let's try it out. There we go. On three. One, two, three. Howell! <laughs> Yeah. All right. We had like multi tones and everything. Yes. Beautiful. So here's the deal. Uh, downfield passing. That was one of the reasons that Geno Smith was so successful last year. Looking at the Washington situation, uh, last year, dead last in first half pass rate. Mean meanwhile, Kansas City was number one, and that's Eric Bieniemy is coming in. He's the new offensive coordinator. Granted, of course, everyone is screaming, yeah, but Patrick Mahomes. Yes, of of course. We know that Patrick Mahomes is the reason you throw so much, but the enemy could be bringing that system over. If Terry McLaurin is good to go, I mean, we're we're still dealing with that toe situation, but don't Mc, need him. You got Dotson. But, but, don't worry about it. But with McLaurin and Dotson on the field, that is a really really strong wide receiver one and two combination. And Sam Howell, yeah, I mean, he's a he unleashes the wolf. Something like the hair, he's got it, and. He runs wild. So like, watch out for like the moon schedule. Oh, you want the full moon? Situation? If we get Sam Howell in a night game with a full moon, let's get the Foot Clan to let us know if that's on the way. Some of you are probably are, are you moon are, watchers? Are you kidding me? I think the the blue moon is like the super blue moon is like well, tonight. That's, yeah, that's tonight. Well, I'm saying, but is he in a prime time game where there will be a full moon? Mm. Because that could be a a serious danger for the the other team in college in his final year. Sam Howell ran a ton. He ran for over 800 rushing yards and 11 rushing touchdowns. I mean, that's that is absolutely ridiculous. And you saw it on display last year uh, in Week 18, Dallas, five carries, 35 yards, and a rushing touchdown. That he is looks the secret for fantasy success at the quarterback position, QB seven, in that particular week. And he's being drafted very, very late. He looks to me. When he is escaping the pocket and breaking through, he looks a lot like Josh Allen. Uh, when it, when you come when it comes to escaping uh, the pocket, so obviously not the same physical stature, I don't think, as Josh no. Allen, but uh, very very quick feet, and uh, you hope that that translates to some success. And look, don't forget, like I know we've been isolating the consolidation around McLaurin and around. Dotson, but like Curtis Samuel is still on this roster, sure, and is kind and of my a champion. He's a multifaceted, talented player who's had great involvement before, and uh, yeah, your champion Antonio Gibson, who could be involved more with the checkdown. They, that was one of the things I liked from some of the the tape on Sam Howell was he did check it down when he got in trouble sometimes, didn't take a big hit all the time. And he's so Sam Howell six one two twenty. So I mean, he's he's a sturdier fella. Like yeah, he, yeah like, he could take a hit. Yeah. All right. So, guys, about this blue moon. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's a blue super moon. Yes, tonight. Yeah, and it won't happen again until 2037. Like, correct. And we're yeah. talking up Sam Howell. Yeah, this but is I mean, going to be his season. I don't know. A blue super moon. What happens to a werewolf during that? Uh, I do believe they have do they? Un unlimited, like the, unlimited power. A lot yes. of killing. Silver bullets? <sighs> Not during a blue super moon, my friend. They're invincible. Yes. But just tonight. Oh, yeah. And, it, and they're not even playing a regular season game. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's yeah. really wasted. <laughs> He's trying to get people out to the field, <laughs> and no one wants to come out. Oh, you don't want to go by a werewolf. Wait, so wait. What's the deal with this blue super moon, moon though, for like... So it's a blue moon, which right? happens, you know... How uh, often? Rarely. Every blue, every, uh, blue a, moon. A blue, a blue moon is a full moon but twice in one month. But you, oh, that's all it is. That's all it is. Oh, come it, on, it's not not blue. Nope, it doesn't actually turn blue. And it's a super moon. But how often does this happen? A blue moon happens. And don't say every blue moon. It's not uncommon. It's like once in a blue moon. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, I hate you both. But yeah, the moon's gonna be like seventeen thousand miles closer than normal, and 
look so it'll look eight percent larger. It'll yeah, it'll look a bit a bit bigger and it'll be very bright. So wait a minute, you're telling me it's not blue? I'm Jason, son of a gun! <laughs> Jason's heart is. I was broken. looking forward to this, seeing a that big. That just blue means moon. he turns into a werewolf twice this month instead of once. Correct. Hmm. It, look, it's it. This is not like a blood moon a where blue it actually moon's looks not red. Blue? No, it's regular. But it's gonna. <sighs> but be a awesome. harvest moon is red, right? I'm getting blue tinted uh, glasses. Or like, orange? Yeah, that orangey. But then there's also a blood moon. Yeah. And is that more red? Yes. But a blood. Do we get any green moons? No. no, I think a blood moon is from an eclipse of some kind. Huh. Mike knows quite a bit about moons. I just I like space, man. It's fun. Jason knows about moons over Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Miami. Moons Miami. over Miami. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> moons Miami. over Miami. I got it and, wrong. And moonshine. <laughs> you come to me for those. Talk to Mike about moons. All right, tomorrow, join us. Special guests galore. The Fantasy MVP Show. Don't miss it. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.